Hi, it's Laura Dawson here and thanks for joining me again. Um, a question I'm always asked as a professional makeup artist is where to get good brushes and what ones to go for. I can imagine it's a minefield out there and you don't know what you're looking for. But I'm going to break it down into really, really simple sections so that you're going to find it really easy to shop. <laughs> It's not that complicated, you don't need a hundred brushes, you need very few. In my own personal makeup bag I've probably got three or four and that is it. So when you see these big massive jumbo sets, you don't necessarily need them. Pick from each bit, buy them individually. Um, a lot of web websites that I go to have photos of the actual brushes, so you don't need to try and figure out what the names are. Different companies call different brushes different things. So think of the shape and the texture of the bristles, that's everything. Now, whether you want to go vegan, animal hair brushes is completely your choice. I prefer um, synthetic brushes for certain things and real animal hair brushes for other things, but the brushes are combed. There is no harm to any animals, so I'm confident with that. So, first thing is base. <coughs> I've got a couple of favourites. and None of them cost a fortune. You can spend a fortune on brushes, but you don't have to. This one's a Real Techniques brush and it's an expert face brush. Now, this is for base or foundation and what you're looking for here is a rounded head quite a firm brush this is one from a different company and it's pretty much the same thing it's a bit bigger but it does the same job I don't favour one over the other they're the same it's the bristles the firmness of the bristles I like and they're too short they pick up lots of product and they do the blending for you so really it's just an action of working in little circles around the entire face and it smooths it all out. It's, they're great. Next up, under eye concealer. I forgot to mention these are synthetic brushes. Whenever you're using a product that's got any moisture in it, it's better to be synthetic. They're much easier to wash for a start and they're firmer. So this is for under eye concealer now. It's the same thing but a much, much, much smaller version. So you can get right under the eyes. Now I actually think this is a, a shadow brush doesn't matter what it says it's for, it's what you personally prefer to use. So I like rounded ended concealer brushes because I think it gets right into the contours of the under eye which some concealer brushes are flat and I don't think they are as leave such a smooth finish. So there you go, my concealer brush. This here is what I use for using powder under the eyes because again it's small. It's a very, very small powder brush and what I do is I kind of pat the colour under my eyes. So if you're working in a small area of the face, use a smaller brush. Simple as that. Now on to powder brushes. Powder contour and blush, right? So face brushes. Powder brush, great, chunky, real hair. Um, so they're really, really good for washing. Just lightly buff the powder all over. Now, I use various types of powder brushes. This is just one of them. I also use maybe one like this. Slightly different shape. It doesn't matter. It's the bristles that matter. They've got to be soft, not too dense because you don't want to apply too much product. The softer the bristles, the less colour they'll give you so a really small compact bristle brush is going to lay down a lot of pigment. Now blush and contour. There's different styles of contour brushes. Some are flat and um, so it chisels right under the cheekbones. I prefer that kind of shape. It's, it's like a big version of a shadow blending brush. So it's tapered hairs, real hair again and it fits right underneath the cheekbone. You can apply it just where you need it. This is another one I use sometimes for contouring, sometimes for blush, sometimes for powder, purely because nice soft bristles again and it's it's kind of good all round I really, it flicks under the cheekbone, it's good for blush and the apples of the cheeks and use it all over for your face. Another classic blush brush just for the apples of the cheeks, nice fluffy hair and on to eyes. This is when it gets a wee bit more tricky. Firstly, I usually apply my shadow base with my fingers because they're warm and it melts the product into the skin and the eyeshadow base is always a cream formula. But for putting shadow down, 
There's two things to remember. A flat, firm brush is for laying product down onto the skin. A blending brush is tapered, softer, that's for blending products out. If you were doing a lid, for instance, you would want to lift up the pigment, press it onto the eye area. It's not for blending, it's for pressing it onto the eye area. So some companies call this a lay down brush or a shadow brush, but it'll never be called a blending brush. So don't worry too much what it's called, look at the shape. It has to be flat and it has to have firm bristles. Okay, so that's for laying down on the lid. Blending brush is tapered, okay, and it's more softer bristles, real animal hair, and this is for blending away edges. So you can lift up product with this, but essentially it's for blending it. So it's for smoothing the colour around and it makes your life so much easier if you've got a good blending brush. Real Techniques do one, um, which I love as well. Here it is. This is brilliant. I don't prefer one to the other. They're the same shape, so they do the same job. Some are more expensive, some are not so much, so really it depends on your budget. But I love the Real Techniques. It's a great range of brushes and it probably actually gives you just what you need. They don't have giant sets, they're all just essentials. So that was lay down, that was blending. Now with liner. If you're going to do a liquid line or a gel line, you need a brush that looks a little bit like this. So it's pointed and it's firm. Not too firm because you don't want it to be hard. So there's a wee bit of, you know, it bends a little bit. But you don't want it to be too thin either. If it doesn't pick up enough product, believe it or not, it actually causes more smudging. So this will pick up plenty of product and you put plenty in the back of your hand if you're using a gel and you gradually just brush it on to the upper lash line. Really, really good one. Art stores do really good liner brushes as well. Some people like the angled brushes. I don't so much. They're good for underliner, not so much upper liner. So for underliner, if you want to get a smoky effect that I've got today, you'd use a pencil brush. And this is a little bit like your eyeshadow blending brush. It's scaled right down and much firmer. So anything that's firm picks up more product. Anything that's floppy and soft picks up less product. So think, doing your powder, you want less. You don't want a thick powder, so it's a thick, floppy, soft brush. But for shadow or liner, where you want to apply a lot of product, it's a much firmer bristled brush and usually shorter hairs. So that one you would use under the eyes and you would just wiggle it across and that'll pick up lots of pigment. Great for doing the inner corner and the last but not least is the angled brush which is great for doing eyebrows if you're using a pomade or if you're wanting a more solid line underneath I suppose, a more detailed line because it's a firm brush. They're not great for blending, it's just good for a nice solid line underneath. Lips, I don't use a lip brush. If I'm using lip pencil, it goes straight on and the lipstick straight out of the bullet. Obviously if I'm using from a palette, I use a lip brush and I wouldn't worry too much about the bristles or what kind of brush it is. I think lip brushes tend to be pretty much, much of muchness. So, that's it. The companies I love to order from are, I love Blank Canvas and that's www.blankcanvascosmetics.com I'm sure it's an Irish company. Um, but I'll put the link to it in the description box below. My canvas are really good because the prices are really reasonable. Plus, you have photographs of all the brushes, so you can't go wrong. If you're looking for a blending brush, you're going to see a photograph of a blending brush, and then you know you're getting what you're looking for. It gives you loads of options to different tips for liner, because everyone has a different um, preference for that. Some are curved, and they've got a bend here. They're more for professional use because when you're working in the opposite direction, it, it's it's more helpful, but when it's personal use, you want a straight one. Um, they sell sets too, but as I said, I think you're better, and I think it's just, um, save yourself a lot of money if you pick out individual brushes as and when you need them. So Eva has another great website, and as, as I said, Real Techniques, which are available. You can buy them super drunk, you can buy them in Tesco, you can buy them online. I've even seen them in TK Maxx. So I like to use a bit of both. I don't stick to the one brand. I have loads. I've got MAC brushes too. I've got some Bobbi Brown, some Chanel. But I have a lot of brushes because I use them professionally and you need to be keeping 
using a clean brush for every client. So <clears throat> apart from that, unless you're working professionally, you just don't need a ton of brushes. So I hope that's helped. If you've got any questions, please ask and I'll see you next time.